Paris. Ah, Paris. Few cities on Earth hold such appeal. A city of lights, of passion for things large and small. Reverence for the old and the new. Parisians and the French in general have made an art out of making time for their city and their community. While this may be true for much of Europe and indeed the world, Paris is a keen example, a sense of simple tradition living in beautiful coexistence with modern life. And it is this inspiring juxtaposition that makes the City of Lights an enduring destination for travelers the world over. Look, I'm not here to tell you about the Eiffel Tower or give you tips and tricks on the best times to visit the Louvre. I'm not going to explain the subways, how hotels work, or why your waiter seems to hold nothing but utter contempt for your dining experience. This just isn't that kind of travel show. What I am here to do is to see and show the other side of Paris, the side less traveled. Given that Paris is one of the most visited cities in the world, it should be obvious that every square meter of it has been filmed, photographed, written about, drawn, painted, and generally appreciated by someone in its nearly 2300 year history. But that does not mean that there's no point in coming here. While the major sites we all know and love can be fun, they can also be expensive and almost dangerously crowded. But there is another side entirely to this magnificent city. A side seen in the quiet cafes of Montmartre, the peaceful parks of the residential districts, away from all the tourist traps. It is in this image of Paris that I think anyone from anywhere can find inspiration to live their life a little bit differently. Paris has an unusual way of quietly funneling the throngs of visitors to exactly where you'd expect them to be. The Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, Sacre Coeur, all the normal spots. But just around the corner from these tourist traps lie some truly unique local gems. Take this bird market, for example. While it's only a few hundred meters away from Notre Dame, you'd be hard pressed to find anyone but locals here. People haggling over the price of aviaries, maybe auditioning a new parakeet to add to their collection. It's a perfect representation of Paris as a whole. While the cold, impersonal industries of modern life are ever present here, just like they are in any other major city, people still make time for real human connection. Whether it's a lively discussion about a niche hobby or just browsing the stalls of a local merchant, it's a refreshing response to the bland modern world of Amazon orders, Walmart, and McDonald's. Another fabulous gem is the district of Klingencourt, Located just north of Montmartre, this fun and funky neighborhood is home to one of the largest and oldest flea markets in the entire world. If you're into antiques, this place is a veritable Pandora's box of unique treasures from all over France, Europe, and the rest of the world. Get lost in the nooks and crannies and you're guaranteed to find all manner of trinkets, from vintage fashion to furniture, music, and just about anything else you can imagine. The market is segregated into different areas based on what's being sold, so depending on where you're at, you may find yourself perusing everything from dollar store knickknacks to priceless antiquities. Tourists may crop up a bit more here in Klingencourt, but it's still a bastion of authenticity and local Parisian culture. Do be aware though, ATMs are a bit scarce here and most sellers only deal in cash, so make sure to plan accordingly. Elsewhere in Paris, hiding in plain sight above the 12th arrondissement is another must-see but often ignored feature known locally as the Promenade Plante, a stunning three-mile-long park built atop an abandoned 19th century railway viaduct. In 1993, Parisian city planners took what was an unused dinosaur of the industrial age and converted it into a truly special feature, a long, narrow path adorned with a gorgeous array of flora, water features, and a sense of serenity. Ideal for biking, jogging, or just strolling, it sits 10 meters above street level and provides some gorgeous views of the surrounding neighborhoods. Located underneath its main stretch is the Viaduc de Arts, a series of 45 boutique shops nestled in the brick archways underneath the park. Now, I can't say it's the best destination for picking up souvenirs. Many of the shops are high-end art galleries, specialty makers of niche goods, design and architecture firms, places like that. But this fact only reinforces the metaphor here. In many other countries, a massive structure like this would either be left to rot or torn apart in a costly effort to erect more rows of cheap condos or boring chain shops. 
But in Paris, they took an aging industrial relic and turned it into a place for locals and foreigners alike to escape the city for a moment and enjoy a quiet walk through a public garden. It's magnificent. Now, if you haven't noticed yet, these seemingly unrelated places all have one extraordinary thing in common. An interconnected, vibrant, and loving community that cares about the place that they live and the others who live there. It's a refined culture of being both a modern European metropolis and a warm, homey French hamlet. And you see this everywhere. On our wanderings of Paris, we found so many striking places. I mean, here, look at this. Some kids playing a pickup game of football. Where are they playing? A boring old schoolyard or somebody's back lot, maybe? Not quite. Surprise, it's a Roman amphitheater constructed nearly 2,000 years ago, once seating over 15,000 people and built to showcase the legendary skills of the Roman gladiators. It's in the heart of Paris in the 5th arrondissement, five blocks south of Notre Dame. Is it a massive tourist attraction funneling hordes of sandal-clad retirees through ticket lines? Nope. Here, it's just another park for some local kids to live out their dreams of being Cristiano Ronaldo for a few hours after school on a sunny Tuesday afternoon. Or have a look at this, the stunning Parc de Belleville, a quiet spot in the northwest of the city. Strolling up the winding pathways takes you to a small and charming hilltop, which offers stunning panoramas of the city rivaled only by those from the steps of the soccer court. It's the perfect place to have a snack and gaze over the colorful expanse of Paris in all its glory. Who else may be there, you ask? Endless throngs of gawking tourists? Wrong again. Just simple, local families and friends enjoying an evening on the rolling greens of the park. I want to make one thing clear. I'm not trying to demean the normal attractions of Paris. The Eiffel Tower is a beautifully imposing monument which exceeds the expectations of anyone lucky enough to visit it. Notre Dame is a stunning work of architectural intricacy, especially when you realize it's a thousand years old. Soccer Cour holds a similar gravitas, and if you get there early enough in the morning, you'll have the steps all to yourself to enjoy a quiet sunrise over the city. If you're an art lover, Paris has the greatest galleries and museums in the world, and there is, of course, the food, which deserves far more detail than I can go into for this short film. But these are the things that come to most minds when you mention Paris, and there's nothing wrong with that. Full disclosure, our last night in Paris was spent on an evening champagne cruise down the Seine River to see the City of Lights from the water. That is about as touristy as it gets, and it was wonderful. Just because something is geared towards tourists doesn't mean it's inherently bad. But as we made our way up the canal to board our boat, Paris took one last opportunity to thumb her nose and prove that the locals here have their own way of doing things. If you find yourself getting off a plane at Charles de Gaulle and wondering what to do with yourself, I just want you to remember one thing. Tourist attractions are tourist attractions for a reason. They're big, beautiful, and enduring cultural icons of wherever they may be located, and they should be viewed accordingly. If you were to leave the airport, head straight to the Champs-Élysées and join a guided tour of Paris's most famous sites, I wouldn't blame you at all. You would probably have an amazing time and learn a ton. But if, like me, you want to see what makes a city like this really tick, just get on a train, get off at any stop, and poke around. You may be shocked by what you find. Wherever you may end up, and whoever you may be with, I'm willing to bet that the experience might just change the way you think about your own city, your own community, and any place that makes you think is a good place in my book. Thank you.